Okay. I'm going to share my screen here. We'll start with uh, what's going on computer lit this week. Uh, first of all, as you guys probably know, this is our second of three weeks in between Thanksgiving and Christmas, and uh, which means next week is the last week before our Christmas break or holiday break. Then when we come back after that, it goes real fast. There's like a week and a half or two weeks at the most. And, uh, and then that's it. We're done January 15th. Last year, believe it or not, we were done by Christmas, if any of you were in the high school then, or, or the middle school, we might have. But um, this year, we uh, didn't have that schedule. Um, first of all, where are we at? Uh, we're going to be wrapping up Excel primarily this week. Uh, we might carry over just a little Excel um, post-test, which I'll end the next week, which would just be a follow-up to the pre-test that we took. But I'll um, talk about that. But most of Excel, as far as regular lessons go, we're going to wrap up this week. And I'll start with the end of the week due assignment first, and that is the Excel. Um, the Excel assignment this week is you make a workbook, and here's a PDF of the information. So you're going to have four sheets in your workbook. You know, it sounds familiar. And uh, one sheet's going to have data about game sales. Uh, one sheet's going to have uh, Amazon annual sales revenue. Uh, one sheet's going to have heights of tree seedlings. And uh, another sheet is going to have our budget. Now, these numbers might be a tiny bit different from when we did it at the beginning of the Excel unit. To be honest with you, I'm not real picky on like the minute details of the numbers. In other words, if you wanted to copy and paste your one from the first one in there. But for those that don't know in Excel, if you copy and paste, the best thing you do is you go to the original spreadsheet. You just literally drag to make sure you include all the cells that have data in them, okay? Then you do a copy. Then you go to the new spreadsheet in the different workbook. You click in maybe cell A1 or somewhere up in the top left corner, and then you do a paste, and then it'll bring everything in and put it relative to each other. And um, so what are we going to do once this data is in here? Well, that's where things get different this week. We're not going to be adding more formulas and functions than that. We're going to be making charts. Okay, what is a chart? I'll show you some examples of that here in just a moment. Um, and then I got to edit something here. I put something in here that I might redo the uh, tutorial, but now that I think about it, I think the tutorials in here are fine. What, what I did last spring, and I shared it again this, uh, this time around, is a combination of me and other tutorials, but they use um, this information. That's where it came from. And they're not hard. You know, it's pretty easy stuff. But at first, I'm going to show you. Yeah. Um, are you going to do like a Thursday lesson again while we do this together? Uh, maybe. I have to think that through here to see how much that may be necessary. Uh, I'm going to be back on tomorrow, too, because they want us to be on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. But tomorrow is going to be a little more informational. I mean, more um, like office hours if people got questions or talk about tech in general. But if something comes up where I decide, you know, hey, that's uh, something that... Um, you know, I feel the need to do. What happened, what I did last spring that was a little different, I found some ones that someone else made so that they did a nice job doing tutorials. So I did a couple of these, I connected that tutorial. Um, but I'll talk about that more tomorrow because I want to look it over some more to decide how, to what extent do I want to leave it as it was and what extent I want to redo it. But either way, it's pretty easy stuff. So I might redo it, we'll see. Um, what I'm gonna do now is to share the screen again. Okay, so what are charts and graphs and stuff in Excel like? They are like this. Okay, this is just, I did a search on Google Images for charts and graphs, but it's where you make this kind of stuff. Okay, so charts and graphs are really nice because you can visually show data. Okay, rather than just show a bunch of numbers, you can have a visual chart that can show, it could show like this here, you know, type of data. It could show, here's a line chart with different lines showing trends over time. Uh, there are pie charts where they break everything down like a pie. Like that's nice for stuff like a budget, you know, how much of my budget's going to rent, how much is going to gas, how much is going to food, 
you know, things like that. So we're gonna learn how to do this stuff. It's actually really easy. Excel makes it really simple. So it's not hard at all. It does take a, it take a little bit of, you know, getting a little bit used to it because something different most people haven't done before. Usually the biggest problem isn't making a chart. That's pretty simple. The biggest problem is selecting which data to make the chart from because you don't use necessarily all your data. And that's one of the things we'll go over in the lesson. Um, but if you get the right data and the right type of chart, and different charts are good for different things. Not all charts are good for um, the same data. So, and once you learn how to do this, you can make a chart in Excel and then, you know, copy and paste, or there's ways you can export that chart and you can bring it into a PowerPoint, you can bring it into a Word document. So especially if you're gonna go into any type of professional or, or marketing or business world in the future or whatever, I mean, people use Excel for all kinds of things. Um, this is really useful skills to have. So I'm gonna just click on out of that and I'm gonna go back to our regular Google Classroom here. So, um, so that's what charting is gonna be about. I'm gonna look this over, over the weekend I was extremely busy grading assignments and uh, contacting students who are behind uh, with stuff they got to get done. And um, so I didn't get a chance to thoroughly go over this, but I took the one I did last spring, which I did spend a fair amount of time, you know, considering how I was going to do it. Um, and I'm going to look that over, see if I want to leave it as is, or if I want to redo another one tomorrow, but I'll talk about that tomorrow and I'll post stuff about that. Uh, so that's what that's what our last regular lessons of Excel are going to be. If we do something next week, it'll just be a follow up to the pretest. I'll probably put a little thing up there to uh, remind what skills you should know, and and then we'll do like a little kind of mini post test for Excel next week. But that won't be regular new lessons per se. Okay, so that's uh, what's going on with um, Excel this week. Then um, what else is going on this week? The other three are all videos relating to one way or another to the web or to the internet. So I'll start with the one that's due Wednesday. How big is Amazon? So this video here, it just kind of, whoop, just kind of a mini documentary all about Amazon. It's only 16 minutes long. And there are some uh, the there are some really good bigger documentaries, but one one that came out this year um, about Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon, and about Amazon itself on PBS is really good. But it's two hours long and it's really in depth, probably you know more than we need for this type of class. So this class here, you know, I figure a 16 minute overview of Amazon. But this is kind of a combination of a story, like, you know, the web started in the 90s, which to you guys, that's ancient history. But to people like me, I was an adult when the web started, so I didn't have any web or anything when I was your age. Actually, it was more than 10 years I was out of high school before it came out. And, um, and then what happened as far as um, what, where the story goes as far as online retailing and online sales, and how did Amazon get so monstrously big? So that's a pretty interesting story. This is a short version of it in 16 minutes. And there's a little assignment to go with that. But uh, for those that don't know the story, um, when the web came out in the early 90s, um, of course, people are trying to figure out, you know, this are people are getting home computers, they're starting to get their first internet hookups. And now this thing called the web came out to make the internet easy to work with. And people, businesses, you know, are thinking of ideas. Well, how can we open up a business online? And of course, all kinds of ideas went online, most of which you never heard from, you know, after a few years they went under. But um, a guy named Jeff Bezos uh, decided to start a company that their main product they focused on at the beginning was books. He had the simple idea that no matter how nice of a bookstore you go into, they don't have all the books that you might want. So he figured he'd open a warehouse and get a bunch of books and set up a website and start selling mostly books online. They sold a few other things early on, but mostly books. It was primarily known as the place to buy books. And they were online only. They didn't have any physical stores anywhere. And then over time, you know, they added more products and got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, other comp many other companies tried to do similar type of things and a lot of them failed or they only succeeded in little small parts of the market. 
So what made Amazon succeed? What made them get so big? What, what did they accomplish that um, led to this massive, massive company we have today? And Jeff Bezos, um, the founder who still runs Amazon, uh, he's, if he's not the richest man in the world, he's one of the two or three richest people in the world. And depending no, he on is the, the richest, he is the richest. Yeah. But it's um, maybe not counting some dictators or something. There might be a few dictators that have more money only because they own their country basically. But, uh, but for actual people, um, yeah, he, depending on the price of Amazon stock, I mean, literally his wealth goes up and down billions of dollars at a time. Um, he's been asked, well, he went through a divorce that cost him about, I read, $38 billion. Now, you might say, oh, my gosh, he lost $38 billion. Well, at the time, he was worth about $150 billion. So don't feel too bad for him. And his ex-wife is doing, I'm sure, just fine with her, not only $38 billion, but after the divorce happened, the stocks went up, and both of them made billions of more dollars on top of that. So, because uh, a lot of their wealth is in their stock. Um, so needless to say, Amazon's doing really, really well and they're really, really big and they've done it really good. I mean, those of you who maybe have been on Amazon, um, part of this assignment is I do want you to take a look at Amazon's website, even if you don't, obviously you probably may not buy anything on it, but, but it's, uh, it's a really well-designed website and it works really well and their shipping works really well and, and, um, it's an interesting story. And now part of the, the debate is, I don't know if you guys ever heard of monopolies or antitrust, but are they getting almost too big? Like, you know, the government could literally break companies up if they get too much power, or too much control of a market. So um, that's something that's going to be, uh, um, you'll be hearing about. So that's a little bit of the Amazon story, and that's definitely part of the web. And also on a smaller scale, some of you might be thinking, well, you know, maybe I want to start a business on the web. Which, whoops, my phone's going off here. Um, some of you might be thinking, hey, I want to start a business on the web someday. And a lot of people have. And I know people who either started a business on the web or they had a business already. And then they want to figure out, okay, I already have a business. Now, um, you know, how am I going to use the web for my business? I'll give you one little example. If any of you ever go over to Marshall, if you go downtown Marshall, there's quite a number of gift shops and antique shops and places like that. And I've talked to some of those owners down there and they said, you know, back in the 90s and that before the web, besides selling in their store, because they have kind of specialty items like antique glass and stuff like that, there's kind of a limited market of who's buying that. They would have to travel all over to these different shows. They'd have these specialty shows for people looking to buy things like antique glass. Now with the web, they just go on the web and some of those little stores told me they're making 90% of their sales on the web. No surprise maybe because something like antique glass has a limited market and that market could literally be anywhere. So now a little shop in Marshall or Battle Creek can go on the web and sell their antique glass or whatever it is they sell, um, you know, on the whole planet. And there was also an interesting story, and in, um, there was a jewelry store in downtown Battle Creek called Perlman's. They did finally close the downtown location about two years ago, but they were there for decades and decades. Well, the original father, whatever, ran it back in the years, 1930s, 40s, 50s, 60s, when people bought a lot of that kind of stuff. He didn't have a lot of competition in Battle Creek, and he did really well. The son took it over, I think, in the 70s and 80s, and he said at first it did okay because there was still some of that culture and stuff going on. But he said definitely by the 90s and early 2000s, he was selling very little jewelry in downtown Battle Creek. But he went online and ended up doing really, really well. And um, so that, you know, so that's how, you know, things are changing. Um, so needless to say, it's a big story in the web world and about business and about marketing and about other things. Okay, Facebook. Uh, PBS does have a really good um, documentary came out this year called The Facebook Dilemma. Uh, it's actually a two-hour documentary if you watch both parts. I, we're just going to do part one, but if, I strongly encourage you, if you're interested in this stuff, to watch part two also. Um, so what is the Facebook dilemma? What does dilemma mean? Dilemma basically means when you're torn between two different things. For example, on one hand, Facebook wants to be a public forum. People can go on there. We're a free country. People can share whatever they want to share within reason, et cetera, et cetera. Then the other side of it, they're so big and they're so influential and so many people go there for information 
that now they're being, you know, criticized heavily for all kinds of things. They're criticized for extremist groups that are on there, hate groups. They're, they're criticized for having too much power. They're criticized for a lot of the fake news that has come out, has been shared in uh, websites like Facebook has played a big role in that, even if they don't want to or planned on it, it just the platform has been used for that. And someone like Facebook, to what extent do you regulate or control or delete or not allow different types of information? And of course, that's... And then there's also another thing. Yeah. They sell the information too, sometimes. Like well, there's that's... multiple... That's another huge thing, the combination of advertising and selling the data. And um, I'd, I've done a little bit of stuff with some people as far as like looking at how they use Facebook for advertising. And uh, it's amazing the information they have. Like, say you're selling some kind of product and you want to reach, you know, think of any combination of factors. Um, men who wear hunting clothes that live in Michigan. You could literally like go on Facebook and somehow they can figure out what men are on Facebook who also like hunting, who also buy hunting clothes. And then you might say, what about women who hunt? Well, that might be another market. You know, we got clothes for women who hunt or, you know, in how can, you know, we can use Facebook for that. You might say that's not a big deal. If I hunt, I don't mind if they use my data to send me advertising I might actually like. So that isn't necessarily a big controversy, but at some point it does become a controversy. At some point it does become, do they have too much power? Do they have too much information? And a lot of the controversy it has to do with other things like hate groups and extremist groups and things like that that get on there, you know, Nazi groups and everything like that. And, and then to what extent can they control that or shut it down or, um, you know, deal with that. So there's a lot of issues like, you know, there's privacy issues, there's legal issues, there's moral issues, there's ethical issues. Uh, and Mark Zuckerberg, who's the guy who founded Facebook, he's still running Facebook. So he's obviously a big part of that story. So that's, uh, that's new this year, and that's, I think you'll find that interesting, and there's an assignment to go with that. When I ask you to do things like summaries and opinions, I think you guys understand the difference. Summary is where you look at what it was about and put in your own words. Pretend like you're going to explain it to someone else. If you watch it, someone else hasn't seen it, and you're going to explain it to them, you know, cut right to the basics. Sometimes students are like, they forget to say the obvious, like, what is Facebook dilemma about? It's about Facebook dealing with all these problems and issues, and it's not always easy to know what best to do or what policies to have. That start, that's like right the heart of what it's all about. Sometimes students get forget like the most obvious things in the, in the documentary or the video is what they should be writing about. Um, and you can, when, in, when you run short, I don't ask you to write very much anyway, but if you can always you would put some examples in there. Now, when it comes to opinions, where that comes up, then that's where you just share your opinions about things. And a lot of these are complex. So I, you know, I kind of like when you go a little more beyond than just saying, well, I think this is good or I think this is bad. You know, give some examples, you know, make some points. Maybe you got mixed views on some of these topics. Um, so, and a lot of that, I do that. I don't just do it to do an assignment for that video. These are important skills to have, period, no matter what you do in life. To be able to look at information, put it in a little different form so you can share it or explain it to other people, and then critically think about it. Critically means is where you think it through carefully. You think about what you agree with or disagree with or what's good or what's bad. And uh, those are really good skills to have. If you're college bound, it's even that much more important to have those skills and be able to write and think and read and watch and analyze, okay? So I do these types of assignments for multiple reasons, not just to learn about Facebook, okay? Then the uh, last one for this week, a little bit lighter and hopefully useful, hence the name 20 useful websites everybody should know about. Um, there are a lot of these type of videos out on the web and a lot of different websites. And I like these videos. I'm oftentimes, I, I'll find them on YouTube and I'll go through something like 20 useful websites everybody should know. And I'll, maybe I don't need to know all 20 of them. You know, not all of them may apply to something I'm interested in, but usually there's some in there that are like, wow, that's pretty cool. I need to bookmark this or I need to check it out. Um, so I just picked one, you know, there's a lot of them out there from a site that I, have gotten some pretty good information from in the past. 
And uh, I think you'll find that interesting. So the assignment is pretty simple. You just pretty much list and briefly explain the 20 sites and just share what two or three you might find most interesting. So beside being, I think, kind of interesting, um, I, think you, I think you'll find that, you know, you might find some useful stuff there for yourself. So it's really not that hard of a week. I'm trying to keep it real practical um, as far as the types of things that we cover and things that we do. And uh, I think it's pretty straightforward. I don't know if you guys have any questions about anything. Um, probably not. Um, just throw out there a little bit. This is a big time of year to buy electronics. Are any of you in the market for anything electronic wise that you're hoping Santa brings you or something like that? You can just unmute yourself and share if you like or put in the chat if you like open up the chat. If you haven't gone in the chat and said at least hello or hi, which actually nobody has, I probably forgot to mention it, please do that. And uh, so, um, yeah, there's a lot of sales out there. And I may have said this already, but, you know, they make a big deal about Black Friday and all that, which was, uh, you know, over a week ago. But you just watch. The sales are hit or miss. You can get better deals oftentimes closer to Christmas. Um, you know, they run sales all the time. There's, you know, see what's going on. Depends on what you want to buy. You can look around, shop around, check the web. Sometime, believe it or not, walking through stores, you can get some really good deals just being in the right place at the right time. A lot of the electronic sections of stores, I use this, I tell students this one about headphones. Um, oftentimes I'll be walking through, it could be Target, it could be Myers, it could be Walmart. And in the electronics, they often have, often it's kind of hidden. Maybe it's at the end of a row. It's kind of in the corner of the electronic section. They'll have a, a shelf or two or a little section with what stuff they're just getting rid of. You know, like maybe new models came in and they just want to get rid of the old ones. So they'll have something like headphones there. So for example, let's say the headphones were originally $70. So the first time they throw it on the shelf, they might mark it down to 50 and they may have 10 of them. Then you, I come back a week later and walk by and now they've marked them down to 35 because maybe they sold two of them and they still got eight more left to get rid of. Then you walk by another week later and they're now, they're, now they're down to 25. So what used to be 70 is now down to 25. And it, sometimes it's not unheard of. You walk by another week later and they're down to like 15 or something, you know, just because they want to get rid of it. So if you can be in the right place at the right time, especially for stuff like headphones and that, you can get some really good deals. And uh, just a little side note here at school, we're working on live streaming. I had a huge breakthrough on Thursday when I figured out how to get our portable studio, which is called a TriCaster. I might have talked about that briefly on Friday um, to live stream. So we're going to be doing some stuff with that with uh, HCTV. When I say HCTV, also I want to clarify, it's not always news. Uh, we used to just call HCTV the news, but that's one of our programs. We're, we're doing other things, and we're talking about doing more variety of things. So uh, I know Zach's already interested. I've been in touch with, and uh, if any of the others of you, and, and Saki a bit, uh, if any others of you are interested, feel free to um, be in touch with me. Okay, it's 9.54. I think that's pretty much about all I got here. So that's the week. It's not too bad. I'm going to look over out tomorrow's. Uh, Zoom session, I'll give you an update on why I decided to do about Excel. I'm going to look through the way I did it last spring. If there's any changes, I'll let you know. So if you don't start that one today, not a big deal. That one's not due till Friday anyway. But today would be a good day if you want to get started on something. Maybe do Amazon first. Um, so, okay. Well, unless you guys got questions or want to hang around a minute for any reason, uh, everybody have a great day. Um, and I'm going to, this is recorded, so uh, this one I'm going to post. I'm not doing a noon live session, which you guys probably won't want to come back to anyway, because uh, we're going to be doing some live stream stuff and practice on that today. So I posted, I'm just going to share this one with, the, with everybody. So if they miss this one, they can just watch the recording. Okay, well, either way, take care. Just remember, I'm going to undo this here. I keep thinking you guys are looking at me. I still got that up. Okay, I'm here at school. You guys have a good day. And it's going to warm a up a day. little bit this week. Yep, take care, and uh, we'll be in touch. Okay. See you.